Hello, I am your everyday average Jonathan. Come join me this week as I turn this and this into this, what is a play structure for a bearded dragon. Move to Colorado, they said. Life is a constant adventure, they said. You get 300 plus days per year of sunlight, they said. Enjoy the fresh mountain air, they said. Well, what they didn't say is how crazy the weather can be. Now, naturally, I live over 8,000 feet in elevation, but it is the end of May, and I just saw snow come flying through on a snow squall that we had with lightning and thunder as well. But I digress, and I'll stop belly aching. I am your everyday average Jonathan. Come join me this week as I take on a project that has been a request for me to build a play structure for my bearded dragon. It's going to be an interesting, maybe one-of-a-kind project, but let's get to the shop and get started. So the first thing I needed to do was source some very interesting wood, which actually, believe it or not, even though my mountainside has been ravaged by several fires in the recent uh, 20 years or so, it's not as easy as you would think. So I have to go out on some backwoods, find something that I find fascinating. And I found this stump, this piece of tree, very gnarled. And I thought it's gonna be extremely difficult, but it's probably exactly what, uh, what this, this project needs. Then I've actually never done this. I put a, a saw blade on my angle grinder and gosh, it worked absolutely perfectly to just sort of hand cut the pieces that I wanted to and get it sort of crafted and, and shaped into the, 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 the rough form that I wanted it to be. Then I'm taking a wire wheel and just taking off all of the bark, all of the little extra stringy pieces of bark and, uh, and using a chisel to get into the grooves, just getting it down to as close as I can to bare wood. Um, each of those nubs that you see, I wanted them to be semi-rounded. I wanted this to have somewhere between a Jurassic Park and even a Mad Max kind of look to it when it's finished. Something that is, is has a lot of personality. It could have been a cactus. It could have been a, a, a tortured stump from days of yore. But I wanted it to have a very old look to it. I'm really liking how this turns out already. It does look like a cactus to me. It's got lots of personality, so hopefully I can maintain that when I add geometric shapes to it. So I knew that I was going to sacrifice one of my big metal clamps for this. So my girls came to visit me in the shop. I had them do a little bit of help bringing pieces of metal on over. Uh, and then I wanted to build a scaffolding at the very base. This was gonna hold the entire structure, so it needed to be welded really, really well. Interestingly, those metal clamps, they're cast, and cast iron doesn't tend to want to weld very well with what I would call just your stock iron. But I made this clamp. It's almost like a shackle. I really like the way this turned out in the end. It looks like it's one of those, uh, I think they're called manacles, shackles that go around hands or ankles in days of yore. I really like the way it looked, but and, and it's exactly how I made it. I love the way that turned out and it gives me ideas for things that I want to make in the future. I'd love to make a pair of old fashioned shackles just to have sort of rudimentarily hanging on my wall. This worked really, really well. It held really, really well. I'm very pleased with it. I got it right the first time, which is a rarity for me. And all I had to do now was weld that, that shackle to the scaffolding that I made. Now, each of these shapes, as you know, are going to be geometric shapes, five-sided, six-sided, seven-sided shapes. And this, this plywood that I chose, it admittedly was just too thin. It was, I think it was like a quarter of an inch plywood, very, very thin. I wanted it to be light, but it just ended up being just too thin to, for me to do it again. I would do it much thicker. I rarely build in six-sided shapes in, in hexagons or in pentagons. I just It's just not something that interests me too much. I love septagons or heptagons that are seven-sided shapes. Uh, so it was neat to combine all three. 
I rarely use that particular device that you see right there that, that grabs the shape off of something then you can transfer it onto something else. It's one of the first times I've actually used it. I've owned it for a really long time. A better craftsman would have done this so that each of the shapes that I set onto this this upright post, if you will, that I could use, I could build a backing to it so that once it settles into and slots in, uh, there's a back to it so that it's uniform. I, I left it uh, left it open on the back end, which you'll see here. Now, no matter how hard I tried, I still got these angles wrong a lot of the time on this molding. Admittedly, I did not get them right. There was quite a bit of patchwork, quite a bit of extra cuts here and there. I did want to have a little bit of, of this, this carpet tile that I've had in my garage for a while so that he has, uh, my bearded dragon has a little bit of purchase on each of them. And I will tell you, gluing this onto this little flimsy piece of plywood was an absolute chore. I got glue everywhere. It didn't go very well. It looks fast here, but believe me, it took a lot longer than I'm showing on camera. Each of these geometric shapes, as I mentioned earlier, I wanted it to have a different uh, support structure. I am going to inset it into the post slightly so that on the post side, it'll set inward and it, it binds a little bit there. But then what I wanted to do is make sure that I had a, a two pieces of wood that were upright struts uh, for one of them, the metal scaffolding for the first floor, if you will, and then these wooden struts that I'm making right here for the, the second floor, second platform. This was really easy to do, just making these basically have a 45 degree angle to all of it um, and it, they screwed in great and then they cinched up pretty darn well. Uh, they, were, they, were, they were level when I was done with them and that's, that's the goal. I also decided, why not make something extremely difficult to do. I was going to make two, not one, but two uh, primitive ladders and put these together for him to clamber on up between platforms. Um, Again, using a lot of glue, a lot of trial and error. I'm not very good at this stuff. They're very fascinating. They're very, very primitive looking and a lot of glue went all over the place, but I think they serve the purpose. The last platform I was going to support in a kind of an interesting way, and I mentioned Mad Max a little bit earlier. This reminds me a little bit of Mad Max. I was going to make this ringlet and then have this chain support from up top. It's going to suspend it, almost like a drawbridge or a moat or something like that. I like the idea behind it. It definitely is something that draws the eye a bit, and, and truth be known, it actually was quite, uh, quite functional as a support structure when I was done with it. Now what I'm doing is I'm cutting out the the recess that the first ladder is going to go into that's going to go from the first floor to this second floor. And this took a lot of trial and error as well. A little bit of shaping because that ladder, of course, was not geometric whatsoever. I do like the way this looks. It turned out pretty cool. Now since both of the screws that were going to attach that ladder will be visible, I decided to use what I consider to be semi-old world flathead screws. They are old world, They're, some of those are pyramid head, so that they do have that antiquated, primitive, um, times of yore look to them. I rarely get to use this little Ryobi tool that I got, but this was a perfect application for it when you need to get in a kind of a tight space and use it. It, it worked out just, just fine. And then this little trapdoor to the, the top platform, the seven-sided top platform, uh, worked out just, just, just perfectly as well. There are definitely some discrepancies, some errors and omissions on this, but overall, I like the way this turned out. I, it's a very interesting looking contraption, uh, and I think it's gonna be something that probably gets passed on to other Bearded Dragon owners. So now, all that's left is to take it to where it's going to live, and that'll be in the house upstairs in the loft office.
Well, thank you for joining me for that build. That build was interesting, fun, and quite frustrating, to be quite honest with you. The idea I had in my head, the concept that I had in my head, that's interesting. That was interesting to me. Pulling it off was another story altogether. Uh, first thing that I learned, let's just get straight into it. The first thing that I learned is when I'm trying to put on geometric shapes, things that I need to be level and true and plumb onto onto non-dimensional, non-geometric shapes. I'm just not very good at that. Those platforms, those three platforms that I put on there, they're not level. They're not level with each other. They're not true to the form. They're off by a little bit. And, and, and I think most people, if they look if they look even moderately closely at them, they'll see that they're, most people can see these things. I knew that was gonna be difficult to make something that is, to make something that stands perfectly perpendicular and level off of, off of a non on straight form, but that's the design that I went for. So the major learning that I have from this is, is illuminated by the molding. I had a five-sided shape, a six-sided shape, and a seven-sided shape. I know what the angles for those shapes are, but more than half of the connections of those moldings, there's big gaps. They don't make correctly. I had to resaw them a few times and they still don't make correctly. I filled those gaps with plastic wood and it still looks like complete garbage to me. I do think I got some of the angles wrong on the shapes themselves, just slightly off, but as I think most fine furniture makers or people who can actually do angles will tell you, if you even get one slightly off and then you put molding on on top of that, like you're just gonna create this sort of downstream effect of, of bad measurements. This is one of the reasons that I don't do more fine furniture or, or fine design type things. I just I just suck at it and I don't like it. I don't enjoy it. It's super frustrating for me. So in, in complete transparency, I'm kind of mad at myself for how those turned out. At the same time, I'm reminding myself I don't want to do that anymore, uh, but I took it on. It, it is how it looks. That said, the overall contraption, if you will, is pretty darn cool. I think it looks really cool. I hope that, that uh, I hope that little man here will use it and climb up all through it. Well, he is not a very ambulatory or mobile or, or energetic bearded dragon as bearded dragons go. So he does love being out in the sunlight. He does love being looking out the window, seeing things. All right, but enough of that. If you like builds that are similar to this, that are kind of whimsical oddities, curios, novelties, uh, fantastical weapons and armor, that sort of thing, check out my channel for other builds that I've done where I take on projects like this. Next week, I'm gonna begin a project that I am really, really excited to do, and it's going to be a gothic, fantastical, medieval lantern. I got the idea from a torch that I built a couple months ago, and I've been thinking, it's been rolling around in my head ever since on how to design a custom lantern. I, I've never really looked at them before, but how to make something that is functional as a lantern that you could use in the dark of night and in the harshest conditions. That's what I'll be making. I hope that you join me for that build. Until then, God bless and have a great week. Ain't that right, little man?